Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! It's time to get stuck on magnets. What's our attraction to magnets? What's their attraction to each other? And can I use magnets to levitate and float in the air? All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today we're going to be looking at the power of mag magnets. You see, magnets are fun things to experiment with because they are really, okay, they're really interesting. Um, this magnet that I've got here is a neodymium magnet or a rare earth magnet. It's one of the, oh, one of the, one of the strongest magnets you can get. Um, a magnet is an object that is attracted to, uh, Anything that is ferromagnetic, which is iron, nickel, or cobalt. And mag magnets are interesting because they have two sides. There are two, uh, oh, there are two poles. I'd show you, but I can't get the chain off. Hold on one second. Ha ha. Mm. There are two. Oh, no. There are two poles to every magnet, uh, just like the Earth. There is a North Pole and a South Pole. That's right, the Earth is a giant magnet. So, if you take kitchen magnets, you'll find that there's two different poles. I've written North and South on these ones. They don't normally come like that. If you put the North and the South together, they stick. But if you put the North and North or South and South together, they repel. They repel, see? They don't want to go together at all. And you can force them together if you want, but if you do, they will spring away the second you let them go. Woo! <laughs> but when magnets repel each other, I find that some of the most interesting stuff. Check this out. This is just a small container, and I've got a magnet in here, and I have a loony attached to it so that it fits nicely in the container like that. For the top, I've attached two magnets together, and I have another coin on it. And if you put them in there, I've made sure that the two poles repel each other, which means this magnet will just sit there and float. Magnetic levitation. Very interesting, and you can pop the top on that if you want and just carry around a levitating magnet. Now, there's a couple fancier ways you can levitate stuff with magnets. This is just a wooden frame I've made. Uh, this is completely not necessary. You can use just about anything in your house. A desk lamp works really well. The important part is I've tied a magnet to the end of this arm here, and this is a bolt, which is attracted to the magnet, but it's got a thread tied to it, so it can't get there just far enough that it will actually hang in mid-air. Look at that, it's not attached to anything, it's just being pulled up by the attraction from the magnet. The thing is, as soon as you pull the bolt away far enough, it will lose the attraction and it'll just fall. Very cool. Here's one that's a little bit more complicated, but is also really neat. This one uses disc magnets, which have a circle or a hole in the middle of them here. And you put two around a pencil and then four more in such a position that you can put the pencil against this wood on the side and it will just levitate on its own. You can even give it a spin. Look at that. And if you want to make a levitating pencil yourself, there's step-by-step -step instructions on how to build an easy-peasy version on our website. Meantime, we are going to max this out. Magnetic levitation on Science Max experiments at large. But you're probably thinking, what are we going to levitate? Well, we're going to levitate me. At least, that's the plan. 
That's why I'm going to the center for skills development and training. Come on. Small. And, and only only going down to waist level. This is the weirdest room I've ever been in. Where where am I? What's going on? I... Hey Matt. Hi Phil. This is Matt. He's from Jobmaster Magnets. Now you guys use lots of big magnets, right? That's right, we do. Awesome. So maybe you could help me max out this. Wow. You did a great job of building the levitating pencil experiment. Yeah, so what's going on here exactly? Well, all magnets have at least a north and a south pole. Right. And when you put like poles together, they want to repel. Oh, okay. So have you ever levitated a person? Not yet. Well, let's do it. All right. Do you think we can use these? We can try. Okay, well, uh, put that one on the ground. And okay, so north, and I'll put the north one on my foot here. And then if I just step, oh, wait a minute. If I step, stop moving, if I step on that, Step on the, okay, well, first of all, the, this magnet keeps sort of moving right. away from me when I try to push down on it. Uh, what do we do? How do we fix this? Well, we need to keep the magnets in position so that they don't move around when you try to bring them together. Yeah, because I have to come straight down on it, don't That's I? That's right. So why don't we attach this one to the floor? Good idea. And then we'll put a board on this one and we'll see how it goes. Perfect. Okay, let's do it. All right. This is a magnet. This is a magnet. This is a magnet. This is a shoe. What's the difference? To know that, you have to know your magnets. This is a donut. It does not stick to this magnet. This is a spoon. It sticks to this magnet. These paper clips stick to this magnet. This shoe does not. So what has attracted the magnets? Only things that are ferromagnetic. Here's the difference. Horseshoe, horseshoe magnet. This one is a magnet. This one is not. But the horseshoe sticks to the horseshoe magnet, because this one's a magnet and this one is ferromagnetic. Only things that are ferromagnetic are attracted to magnets. Things that are not attracted to magnets, they're not ferromagnetic. Plastic, banana, mitten, sandwich, magazine. No, but how do you know? Do you go around the world sticking a magnet to every single thing one at a time? Hey Ma, I need you to come over. I need to see if you're ferromagnetic. No, ferromagnetic. No, you don't need to do that. First of all, only metals are ferromagnetic. So that eliminates all your clothing, your luncheon meats, your magazines, what have you. Everything that's not metal, you don't need to worry about. Never mind, Ma, it doesn't matter. But this clock is metal. It doesn't stick. Well, not all metals are ferromagnetic. Mainly just the ones with iron, nickel, or cobalt. And there you have it. Now you know your magnets. I hit the phone on the magnet there. Okay, uh, can you hear me, Ma? Hang up the phone. Hang up. Hang up the phone, Ma. My first attempt at levitating had the magnets sliding all over. So the plan is to take the bottom magnet and attach it to a big wooden board so it won't go anywhere. Then attach another plank to the top magnet to make it a little easier to stand on. Okay, that uh, is definitely attached to the floor. Thank you. All right, now, if I just get this lined up. Whoa, look at that. You can totally, oh, wait a minute. Totally. It doesn't want to stay put. Oh, wait a minute. They levitate. Come on. Levitate. Why doesn't it want to stay? It just doesn't. Hmm. Should I stand on it? Okay, I'll stand on it. Here we go. And. Ah! Ha! Ah. Am I levitating? No. No. Hmm. So why isn't this working? Well, just like your pencil experiment, 
We need a shaft through the center to hold the magnets in position. Oh yeah, maybe we could use like a ring magnet. Yes. That, like we used with the pencil. Right. And? And we're gonna need stronger magnets. We're gonna need stronger magnets. Are the ring magnets strong? Yes, they can be. Awesome, all right, let's do it. All right. Now it's time for a Science Max quiz. Which one of these things do we have magnetism to thank for? Birds flying south in the winter, music, or a sandwich? If you picked A, you're right. Some birds migrate in the spring and fall using the Earth's magnetic field. Many animals can sense the Earth's magnetic field and use it to navigate. Migrating birds fly hundreds or thousands of kilometers north or south when they migrate in the spring and fall. A compass works the same way, by using magnetism to point to the Earth's magnetic north pole. But if you picked B, music, you're right! Here's some music. The way you're hearing this music is because the musicians recorded their instruments using microphones, which use magnets. And then the signal was translated by a computer and stored on its hard drive, which uses magnets. Then it was broadcast to your TV and comes out your speakers, which use, you guessed it, magnets. And for those of you who said you have magnetism to thank for your sandwich, haha, <laughs> well, you're right. You see, you'd probably go to the kitchen to make that sandwich, right? Well, I'm guessing you got all of the tasty ingredients from your refrigerator? Well, it works on electricity, which is produced by magnets. And then there's an electric motor in the fridge that circulates the air and keeps it cool. And guess what? Magnets. And finally, the door on your fridge stays closed because the door has magnets. So there you go. You can thank magnetism for birds flying south, music, and your sandwich. It just goes to show, when you're talking about magnets, everybody wins because magnets are everywhere. This has been a Science Max Quiz. Mini Max! Here's an experiment you can do with a bag of water. Take a sharpened pencil and carefully push it through the bag. If you do it carefully, it won't spill. The reason this works is because the bag is made of polymers, long stretchy chains of molecules, and also because the pressure of the water against the pencil prevents any water from spilling out. Now, we're gonna max it out. This is a very large bag of water, and here I have some very large pencils. You ready? Oh. <laughs> That's one. That's two. Here we go. Should I go from the bottom? Ta-da! Science! Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> I know what you want. <laughs> like I was saying, science! Turns out trying to balance two repelling magnets on top of each other is pretty much impossible. Here's why. This is a magnet, and here is the magnetic field. It's often drawn with lines like this, but actually the magnetic field radiates out in all directions. Really, think of the magnetic field kind of like a ball. When you try to balance another magnet on top of the first magnet, it's about as hard as balancing one ball on top of another ball. So here's the plan. Just like the levitating pencil, we're going to use ring magnets because we can put a shaft through the center of one ring, then drop another ring magnet on the shaft. It will keep them perfectly aligned. Then it's just a matter of putting the bottom magnet on a board to keep it stable and using another board so I can stand on it and ta-da, magnetic levitation. Or at least that's the plan. Okay, board. Magnets. Magnets. 
Ooh, look at that. Awesome. And now I'm gonna put the platform on. Nice. Now I got some weights here. Let's see how this works. Yeah. This is gonna work amazing. All right, think I should try it? Give it a try. Okay. Here we go. Huh? Huh? Yeah! I'm doing it! I'm levitating! What? Just a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. So, hmm. Yeah, what do we do? We need more power. More power? I like that idea. How do we give it more power? Uh, more shafts, more magnets. Okay, sure. Well, why don't we do um, why don't we do one, two, three, four shafts, and then we'll have magnets on all the shafts. Great idea. All right, let's do it. If you attach something ferromagnetic like this washer to a magnet, not only does it stick, but the magnetic field travels down the metal, making it a magnet too, which means you can stick more and more things to each other, and they will continue to stick until you run out of magnetic field. You can do this yourself at home with anything ferromagnetic. Paper clips work pretty well, or washers like I have, or screws, or bolts, and they'll continue to stick to each other as long as the magnetic field is strong enough. You can see it's getting pretty weak here, and they'll all stay magnetized as long as the first one is still attached to the magnet. But if you want to go even further, all you need to do is keep adding more magnets to reinforce the magnetic field. I've got a few here, like this. Let's get the chain started, like that. And then I've got a magnet attached to this washer, so it will keep the magnetic field strong. And I continue to add um, one magnet, one washer, and we'll just see how far I can go. You can even sculpt it a little bit. Look at that. And then at the end, a whole bunch of paper clips. Eventually, the weight will make it fall off, but it's a lot of fun to play with magnets and make art. Speaking of art you can make with magnets, you can also make sculptures. When everything sticks to everything else, you can make some pretty fancy designs. This is a rare earth magnet, a very strong one, and a bunch of nuts that I've gotten. And this one here is an electromagnet, but electromagnets are a little different because they need an electric current to work. Check this out. This is sort of a magnet dude with crazy hair. There's an earth magnet here, and this is a giant screw, and these are some metal bits, and then I've got two more magnets at the top here to hold on his crazy wire hair. He's got crazy wire hair because he's crazy magnet dude. Now, of course, we couldn't just talk about magnetic sculptures without maxing it out, so let's max it out. This is a bunch of scrap metal from leftover experiments, and I've got a bunch of rare earth magnets, and now I'm gonna max out a magnet sculpture. Let's see. There you go, a maxed out magnet, me! I made this guy out of metal pipes with earth magnets in between, and these are his arms attached, of course, with magnets. His hand, his little metal pieces attached with magnet. Steel wool for the hair, and of course, hat non-magnetic. All right, here we go, ready? Uh, uh. Want to see a magic trick? Simple copper tube. Drop things through it. Nothing unusual happens. But watch when I drop a magnet through. What? It's not magic, it's science. Because the magnet creates a magnetic field when it goes through the tube, the magnetic field repels the magnet upwards. Now the field isn't perfect, so the magnet doesn't come to a stop, but still it slows down from a fall to a nice graceful drop. Take a look from above. Pretty amazing, right? Magnets, not magic, science.
so I've managed to levitate on some magnets, but just barely. What Matt and I needed was more power. So instead of having one shaft and one pair of ring magnets, we're going to use a larger board and put a shaft on each corner. Then we'll have four times the power because we're using four times the magnets. Hopefully this will be strong enough to get me floating on a cushion of magnetic energy. And magnets? Magnets. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is gonna work great. And top board. Mm-hmm. Ooh, what do you think? Looks great. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Matt? You're levitating. I'm levitating! Woohoo! All right. It feels cool. It's sort of like, it sort of feels like surfing a little bit. All right, thank you so much, Matt. That was amazing. And there you have it. Science Max, experiments at large, magnetic levitation. You know, I'm surprised we could do an entire episode on magnets and we never actually got them so close to the camera that the camera went all weird because Cameron's a magnet, they don't, no. oh dear. Uh-oh. Um, no, that's okay. I can, I can, well, I can fix this. If I just, maybe, no. If, maybe if I put the magnet to the camera again, that would, oh, oh, okay, that's uh, not, no. that didn't help. Oh, okay, well, thanks very much for watching uh, Science Max, experiments at large, and uh, we'll see you again uh, as soon as we, we get a new camera. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the power of magnets. 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 Wait, okay. This one here is called a neodymium magnet, or a rare earth magnet. It sticks to this magnet. Magnet. Ramona, the fish fell. Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. The third law is the science behind balloon-powered rocket cars. It's also the science behind a maxed-out rocket car that I can ride. Plus, bowling balls and an interrupting sign. Today on Science Max, experiments at large. <laughs> Greetings, Science Maximites. I am Phil McCordick, and this is Science Max, experiments at large. Today, we're going to be experimenting with the balloon-powered car. Here's how it works. It all has to do with Newton's third law. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, we don't, we don't have to do this now. We can, this is all for later. We can build the cars first and then we can, uh, let's go over here. So how do you build a balloon powered car? Well, I suggest you be science maximites because there's any number of ways you can build a balloon powered car. You do not have to follow my design. You should come up with one of your own. It may even be better than the one I built, but I will give you some tips though that make it a lot easier. First of all, you need something to stick your balloon on that has an opening on it. I used a turkey baster for this car. I just pop the top off and remember to tell an adult that you're using the turkey baster. And then you stick the balloon on there and it allows you to attach something to the car and it also makes it easier to blow up the balloon. <laughs> you can use any number of things, even just uh, any kind of tube that you find lying around. It helps you attach the balloon to the car and it helps you blow up the balloon way easier. The other thing you should think about when you make your balloon powered car is how you're going to make the wheels roll. Once you've decided on the base of the car, you could use anything, even just a piece of cardboard like this, you can do your wheels in two ways. The first way is to attach the wheels to the axle. This is how I made the axle of this car. I used a shish kebab skewer and I stuck it inside a straw, just like that. And then I attached the lids to the shish kebab skewer. So the lids and the shish kebab skewer are attached and they rotate in the straw. That's one way to make the wheels turn. The other way is to 
tape down the axle or whatever you're going to use uh, and have the wheels spin around on the axle. Two great ways to make your wheels turn, and it really kind of depends on the wheels you're using. You can make your own design and keep refining it and making it better and faster, or do what I like to do and make a whole bunch of different cars. So we've got this one. Uh, this one I made out of paper plates, and this is a snorkel. Awesome. This one is the rock car, because there's a rock on it. I've got uh, the dragster model. It's a long broom handle, and it might not work that well, but who, who knows? And this is my favorite design. It's made out of waffles and an ice cube tray. This is why I make a whole bunch of different cars, because I can race them. Sunday, 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 at the Science Maxadrome. It's the balloon powered car winner take all drag race of awesome. First up, the Eliminator. Better late than never, it's the Procrastinator! <laughs> Crushing the competition, it's the Terminator! Feel the chill of the refrigerator. <laughs> All right! And last but not least, the um, regurgitator. Well, when you build your balloon-powered cars, you can figure out what worked or uh, what didn't work and try modifying your designs to make them work even better. That is science. And now we're gonna max it out because this is Science Max Experiments at Large. So we're gonna take that small balloon-powered car that we just built and we're gonna make it much, much bigger. I'm gonna go to the Center for Skills Development and Training and we're gonna use the science behind the small balloon-powered car and we're gonna make it big. That science is Newton's third law. But there's Newton's plenty of third law. No, there's, for every action, there's, there's plenty of time for this later. We're not doing action. we're not doing this bit now. We're doing that bit in a minute. So we could we, we, No, I, I said we're doing it later. We're doing it later. <sighs> oh. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Phil. This is Sarah, and she's got a master's degree in physics from McMaster University. That's right. And we're gonna be talking about Newton's third law. Ooh, look out, look out, duck! Uh, sorry, sorry. There was a sign that kept coming in. Um, never mind. Newton's third law, well, what is that? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Right, so how does that work with our balloon car? Ah, cool, okay, so if you blow up the balloon, What's gonna happen when you release it is the air is gonna push out with a certain force, which in turn is gonna cause the cart to move forward with the exact same force. Yeah, works great. So how come it doesn't work with my rock cart? Ah, wow. Well, actually it did work. So the balloon still pushes with the exact same force, which causes the cart to have the exact same force push forward, but your rock is really heavy, so you probably didn't see it move. Oh, so a lighter cart works better with the same amount of force. That's it. Well, there you go. Newton's third law. What? Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. I'm really starting to dislike that sign. Phil, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Our small balloon-powered car works because of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The air pushing out the balloon this way pushes the car with the same amount of force this way. So, in order to max it out, the plan is just to get a bigger wheeled cart and a much bigger balloon. So, everything should work out the same. Okay, so, sir, oh, I thought what we would do is I would, in order to max out the balloon-powered car, what we need is a cart to start with, and then I ride it. 
and we have a giant balloon, and then I go. Do you have a giant balloon? Ha 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 Giant balloon! So, step one, uh, Sarah blows up the balloon. Okay. Use this air compressor, it'll probably be a lot faster. Sarah and I get to work blowing up the balloon, and it takes a long time. A very long time. Okay, human-sized balloon-powered car test. Take one. All right, Sarah. You got it? Yeah. Okay, let it go. Let it go, go. Let it go. <laughs> you did. You did let it go. I let go. Nothing is happening. It's not coming out fast enough, and you're a bit too massive. I don't think it's going to work like this. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, balloon powered car test two. No fill. I'll just take it. And... <laughs> what happened? Uh, I don't think it worked. The balloon popped. Phil, are you okay? This is why you wear protective eyewear. Uh, yeah. So, that didn't work. No. No. Should we get another balloon? Uh, I think uh, we need something else. Okay, well, the air coming out of the balloon just what didn't have enough force, so. We need the air to come out with more force. Yeah, do we get, what, a bigger a bigger balloon? I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think it's that. I think we need something with compressed air. Oh, like a scuba tank or a... Fire extinguisher, something like that. Yeah, that, that's what we need. Okay, sure. Well, we can... All right, so I don't know if that's safe to do that, so we'd have to build, a, like, a cage or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work on this. All right, well, back... Back to the drawing board. So okay. what we should do is we should get we need a... need to find these tanks. You get the tanks and then we make a, like a frame out of aluminum or something. Okay, that could work. Yeah, they can hold idea. the tanks, so yeah. they're safe. And then what we should do is... Who was Isaac Newton? He was a mathematician and probably number one on the list of top scientists of all time. Albert Einstein said, Isaac Newton was the smartest person that ever lived. You've got to be special if Einstein is calling you smart. Newton's three laws of motion was a huge idea, but did you know Newton also came up with the idea of gravity? The famous story is that in 1666, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree when he watched an apple fall and wondered why. Hey everyone, I just invented gravity, which was a big relief because up until then, everyone was just floating around. Okay, so it didn't happen like that. He didn't invent gravity, he gave a name to this invisible force and then described how it works. Not only did it make things fall down, but it was the same force that kept the moon circling the earth and the earth circling the sun. And he invented a new kind of math to explain how. We now call it calculus. See, I told you he was smart. He's very smart. This is hydrophobic coating. Hydrophobic literally means afraid of water, but it's not actually afraid of water. The chemistry of a hydrophobic coating prevents water molecules from penetrating anything you spray it on. You can get this stuff at the hardware store, and if you want, be science maximites and get an adult and think of the coolest thing you could spray with hydrophobic coating. I like to use things that do not go well when you put them in water, like uh, tissue. Yeah, doesn't look great when it gets wet. Here's a tissue coated in hydrophobic coating. Huh? Weird. Or it works the same with a paper towel. Paper towel in water. Paper towel covered in hydrophobic coating. Stays dry. Or how about a dinner roll? Dinner rolls really don't like water. See? Gross. But a dinner roll coated in hydrophobic coating? Weird. Just don't eat it. Now, it's time to max it out. I have coated half of my lab coat in hydrophobic coating, and the other half, I have not. Hydrophobic coating, regular lab coat. Half of me is wet, and half of me is dry. What's more, half of my outfit ended up being wet and half dry because the lab coat was protecting my outfit from getting wet. Now it's time to max it out even more. We have coated my entire outfit in hydrophobic spray. My shirt, my pants, and my lab coat. The pants have been taped to rubber boots, so no water's getting in there. And my shirt has been taped to my pants, so no water's getting in there. 
So here's the question. Can I get into the pool and out of the pool and stay dry? Let's find out. In the pool, out of the pool, and I'm still mostly dry. Now here's what really happened. I got into the pool and I realized I should have duct taped the pocket because all the water went in there, down into the rubber boots, started filling up the rubber boots, and now my entire leg is full of water because the hydrophobic coating isn't letting it come out. So the hydrophobic coating isn't keeping the water out. Now it's keeping the water in. Let's take a closer look at Newton's third law. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. OK. All right, let's watch it back. When the sign hits me, I exert a force on the sign in the opposite direction. That makes the sign stop moving. It also exerts an equal force on me, causing me to fly off in this direction. Now, if I was to push this sign, I'm not only pushing the sign this way, but my feet are pushing against the ground in the opposite direction. It's, um, well, it's really easier to see if I'm not standing on the ground. Um, no, oh, hold on. Okay, so, huh? Oh, okay, so now that I'm hanging, watch. I push on the sign, but when I exert force on the sign to make it go this way, I go that way. Well, actually, it's, it doesn't work as well because the sign isn't as heavy as I am. So wait, I have this over here. This is a, a barrel, and it has stuff in it, and it weighs as much as I do. Okay, so watch. If I push on the barrel like that, I go away from it as much as it goes away from me. So, there you have it. Newton's... Newton's third... No, hold on. Newton's... Newton's third law. Newton's third law. Okay, go. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, using a giant balloon to push me on a cart uh, didn't work. And I... Ah! What happened? The plan now is to use the compressed gas cylinder. Just like a balloon, these cylinders contain a lot of air. If we get a cart and put a gas cylinder in a cage, for safety, on the back and open the valve, the escaping air might have enough force to push me. This is two cubic meters of air. If we were to put it in a balloon, the balloon would be this big. But if we compress the air, we can fit it all into one of these, a steel tank. This is what we're gonna be using next for our air-powered car. Got it? Yep. All right, Good. so Sarah and I have been hard at work and we've built the air-powered cart. We can't call it a balloon-powered cart anymore because now we've got a compressed air tank, so it's not a balloon that powers it. Exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna sit on here, Sarah's gonna turn on the tank, and I'm gonna go. And before we do this, we should say, do not, under any circumstances, Try this at home. We are trained professionals. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, high five first. Okay, now we do it. Okay, so before I turn the tank on, make sure your feet are down and the brakes are on. Gotcha. Uh, Don't take them off till I say go. You have got it. All right. Ready? Okay. Uh, yeah, it did work, but I feel I feel like it could work better. You want to go faster. I do want to go faster. This reminds me of the rock car. Yeah. Where we didn't have a big enough balloon. We need more force. We need more force. So should we get a bigger tank? Let's get more tanks. More, more tanks, more force. You're going to go faster forward. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. High five. All right, let's do it. All right. Newton's Cradle, and it's a really cool toy that demonstrates all kinds of laws of motion, including Newton's third law. Newton's what you do law. is you or pull this one ball out, and when it hits these balls, they exert force on that ball to make it stop moving. 
but it exerts force on these balls, which travels through the balls and makes this one on the end fly out, like that. Now there's a lot going on here, but you can really see how the force is equal that you put in and you get out if you use two balls. I swing two balls up and two balls go out that side. Isn't that cool? Now it wouldn't be science max unless we maxed it out, so come on. Okay, this is one we built out of bowling balls. Bowling balls. Bowling balls. <laughs> Instead of smaller balls. And I think it's gonna work the same way. Let's find out. You throw one out and, and <laughs> yeah, it works the same. Okay, now let's try it with two balls. Okay, ready? Wait, 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 wait. And two balls, throw them out. And two balls on that side. All right, so there you have it. Whoa. Newton's third law. Oh. Ah! Ah! Third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So our single pressurized tank created enough force to move me, but not very fast. The plan now is to do two things. First, we're going to triple the amount of thrust by using three tanks. We're also going to use some pipes that lock into each other to give me an initial push. These pipes slide together, and when the air is turned on, the pressure in the pipes will cause them to slide apart, which will push me forward. After that, I use what's left in the tanks to keep going. All right, now it's time to max it out. I've enlisted the help of a few more Science Max people. Thank you very much, Corey. You'll see now we have three tanks of compressed gas, and we've also got this nifty little contraption. How does this work, Sarah? All right, so each tank is attached to a tube, yeah. and you can see that each tube goes into this one main tube, so when we turn them on, pressure's gonna build up, and we're gonna go forward with more force. Well, that's great, and Reed is stacking cinder blocks, thanks, Reed, uh, up so that will push, uh, the pipe will push against cinder blocks, and then I'll go that forward. way. All right, well, are you guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Now, again, I have to say, thank you, Corey, I've got it. This is something you definitely don't want to try at home. We are all trained professionals. We have a physics degree here. We've got TV people that make sure that this is safe. So uh, watch it and enjoy, but please don't try any of this at home. OK, I'm ready. Sarah, count me down. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was awesome! That was really awesome! All right, high fives, high fives! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> and it's raining now, so it looks like we're gonna have to stop. So thank you very much for joining us on Science Max Experiments at Large in our episode on Newton's Third Law. Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. This one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I, I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Wait, I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's working! It's working! <laughs> Newton's cradle at a bowling ball. Come on! You know this one. Sing along. Wee! Come on! I mean, come on!